The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went off to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and take his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in Scripture, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Last weekend, Father John reminded us that we are students of the Lord, invited to enter into his love by listening to God's word and by practicing it in life. He challenged us as Catholics to be different, to be the best we can be, to say the right things and do the right things, to aim to be saints and change the world. Today we hear about God's vineyard. The readings offer us a dialogue between the Lord and his people. God has planted the seed, his word, his spirit, in the very person of Jesus Christ, in the lives of all his people. We come here to pray and to worship, to give thanks and to be nourished by his word, and to be nourished and fed by the living presence of Christ in Eucharist. We are in God's vineyard. We are God's vineyard. The readings from Isaiah tells us that God treated his people with goodness. He provided a very fertile hill for, for his vineyard. He dug it up, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines. And he built a watchtower and a wine press in it. Yet still, they produced only sour grapes. In the gospel, we hear what happens when the vineyard is occupied by people who want it all for themselves. The evil that results when weeds of pride, greed, and resentment grow and take over the vineyard. 
For most of us, life is often like a roller coaster with ups and downs. Unfortunately, we tend not to listen so closely to God's word in the gentleness of life when things run smoothly. We can relate to these readings today because they reflect the turmoil, the messiness, and the chaos of what happens in our world and in our personal lives. If we think that God is calm and detached from all this chaos, then we have a false spirituality. God is not calm nor detached. I imagine he has righteous anger over the crimes of our time. World poverty, racism, sexism, physical and emotional abuse, people being killed and terrorized by acts of hatred and intolerance, the deadly Ebola virus that continues to take so many lives, the massive demonstrations in Hong Kong for political freedom. And we see violence, pain, and poverty, and isolation in our own backyard. The chaos of dysfunction, the struggle that a single parent goes through, the breakup of a relationship, the loss of health or security, or the death of a loved one. All of these things in life can shock us into reality. The reality that we don't own this vineyard, but we are tenants. Often we are our own worst enemies. We want control of our lives. We think we can make those changes that we know need to be made on our own. We kind of play God. These realities of life can silence us into humility. They can bring us to our knees long enough for God to get our attention. Life challenges can open our hearts to hear God in a way that somehow we missed when things were going our way. Maybe these are God's tough love moments for us. Moments of opportunity to refocus, to hear what God asks of us, and to do what is right. Doing what, with, what is right starts within. It's taking care of God's vineyard. It entails examining our life and our motives. It's pruning dead branches of habit and self-centeredness, weeding out arrogance and complacency, and surrendering to God. It's moving the log from my own eye before I can ever notice the speck in someone else's. God doesn't want us to be overgrown with weeds or to feel like sour grapes. He wants to bless us, to fill us with his love and goodness to the point that it spills over. He wants us to turn everything over to him, to listen to his word and grow as his disciples. God indeed challenges us to be different to be the best that we can be, to say and do the right things, and to change the world. Isaiah tells us, he expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. Righteous anger is a virtue from God that we so often fail to practice. At times, saying or doing the right thing requires righteous anger. It means caring enough for someone to call forth the best from that person. It means really listening to the cries of those who have been hurt, those who feel isolated, alone, and uncared for, and then doing what we can to effect some change. 
to console and to offer hope. It means speaking up against injustices and taking a stand against sinful and evil actions. Doing the right thing may put us face to face with opposition and rejection, but that's a pretty minor price to pay in our journey to be saints, in our journey to change the world. As we approach the Eucharist, we take time to reflect on what God is offering us, the reality of what he invites us to receive, the very body and blood of Jesus. St. Paul reminds us the only peace, it's only the peace of God, which surpasses all things okay, that can guard our hearts and our minds. Only God can give us the grace to respond in the way that he asks us to.